Hey, thanks, students. So on this clip, we're going to be going over question 30 of the Algebra 2 Tree Greetings exam for January 2013. Um, some students requested uh, the algebraic solution to number 30. I did it graphically, but I just wanted to show you what the algebraic solution uh, looks like, okay? So for number 30, uh, we are told that if secant alpha uh, a plus 15 is equal to cosine cosecant 2a, find the smallest positive value of a in degrees. So this um, result involves the intersection of two uh, trigonometric curves, two um, asymptotic trigonometric curves, and there are infinite number of solutions, infinite number of um, intersection points. We have to find the smallest positive value. Since you have so many answers, um, the graphical approach would be the best way to solve this because you can easily tell the smallest positive solution, as I showed in the previous video, the closest intersection to the y-axis from the right. Uh, that will be the solution. But some of you wanted to see the algebraic solution. So I'll show you how to come across that. Um, it's very hard to do. Not too hard to do, but there are a lot of solutions you can get. Um, so you just have to know exhaustive possibilities to see which one yields the smallest positive uh, result. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go directly to the, uh, the, the exact identity that yields the results. Um, uh, okay. So before I start, there's some identities you need to have um, in your mind, fresh in your mind. You need to remember your uh, reciprocal identities, secant, um, secant A uh, is equal to 1 over cosine A. And um, you also need to remember that cosecant A is equal to uh, 1 over uh, sine A. These are known as your reciprocal identities. And then you need, to, you need to also re remember your uh, reduction identities. Uh, one of the ones for sine, there are multiple ones for sine, but one of them for sine alpha, sine A is negative cosine A plus 90. It just basically means that if you take a cosine curve, you shift it 90 degrees to the left, and when it's reflected downwards, you're going to end up with cosine A. Okay? So just a uh, translation and reflection of the typical cosine curve to get a sine curve. And then what if you have cosine A, there are multiple uh, reduction identities for cosine A, but the one we're going to use today is um, negative uh, cosine 1AT minus A. So basically, if you um, take a look at this, you can switch this around and take out a minus, and then the cosine absorbs the minus. This is the same thing as cosine um, A minus 180. So if you shift a graph 180 degrees to the right and reflect it downwards, you're going to end up with cosine A. So these are the identities I'm going to be using um, to solve this problem. All right, so first of all, let's rewrite the problem. Secant um, a plus 15 is equal to cosecant uh, 2a. Now let's use the reciprocal identity here. So we're going to have, um, what are we going to have? We're going to have secant is cosine. So cos actually, it's going to be 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine a plus 15 is equal to 1 over, the reciprocal of cosecant is sine, right? So 1 over sine uh, 2a, okay? So there you have it. All right, so now um, we can cross multiply. We have sine uh, 2a is equal to uh, cosine um, a plus 15. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of the two uh, reduction identities we talked about here. So sine A is co negative cosine A plus 90. So let's apply that here. So we have negative cosine. Instead of A, the argument of a sine function is 2A. So instead of A here, we're going to have 2A plus 90 degrees. Okay, and then on the cosine component, the reason why I have to apply a reduction identity for cosine is because I'll have a mismatch with the sine, then I can't really solve it. So I'm going to apply a reduction identity here to invert the sine to a negative cosine so I can cancel the cosines out, okay? So let's go ahead and apply the second identity I have here. Reduction identity is going to be cosine. Instead of 180 minus A, it's going to be 180 minus parenthesis A plus 15. Because in this case, this expression A plus 15 is equivalent to A, all right? Okay, now... Um, Let's 
Okay, actually I left out the minus. Because you see there's a minus there, so I need to have a minus here too. Alright, so what we're going to do next is let's get rid of the uh, negatives. So to do that is not hard. We divide both sides by negative 1. Okay, divide both sides by negative 1. So we're going to have cosine 2a plus 90 degrees equals cosine. Like, why don't we simplify this while we're at it? 180 minus a minus 15. Okay. All right, now we just take the inverse cosine of both sides. So the inverse cosine of cosine um, 2a plus 90 degrees equals the inverse cosine of, we can simplify this a little bit more, 180 minus uh, 15 is, um, take out 10, so 165 minus a, okay, oh boy. I left out the cosines. Let's put that in. Um, so it's the inverse cosine of this entire expression. So it's inverse cosine of um, cosine. And then now 180. Let's make it 165. Because 180 minus, if I, I just want to simplify while we're adding, 180 minus 15 is 165 minus 8. All right. Okay, so cancel out, the cosines cancel out, the cosines cancel out. So we have 2a plus 90 equals 165 minus a. So it's just an elementary algebra from here on out. Um, you add a to both sides and uh, subtract 90 from both sides. And then you're going to have, um, what are you going to have? You're going to have 3a is equal to 165 minus 90 is 75 divided both sides by 3 and they have a is equal to 25. All right this is one of the many solutions that they are. It turns out that this is the smallest when you get all the answers they're either going to be negative uh, which do not count or they're going to be bigger than this. So this uh, basically is, is your, your final answer. All right so um, there you have it.